Hello, it's me, Madge Weinstein. You remember my dog Trotsky. He's on my laps. Start over. Hello, lesbians and gentlemen. It's me, Madge Weinstein. You remember my dog Trotsky. Now, you may recall that I started uh, the current incarnation of Yeast Radio in 2004. It was Election Day 2004. President Bush was re-elected which sparked an outrage in myself, and I went on a huge tirade, which uh, I put on video, and then Lady Bunny caught on to it, and then uh, she uh, made it, I guess, viral before uh, viral was in, and uh, then I turned it into an audio podcast and less than so, but that doesn't matter. What matters is why I have to endorse President Obama at this last hour. Now, why didn't I do it up till now? Well, I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian. I am a lesbian. A lesbian. However, I still have to do what is necessary. There are two reasons why I endorse President Obama emphatically and urge you to vote for him if it is legally possible for you to do so. Number one is the Supreme Court. I don't think this has been discussed enough in this election, chicken. The other reason is uh, Obamacare. So let's first talk about the Supreme Court. You want to go down? Go ahead. Lineups. Sorry, I wore my nightgown. There's already a five to four conservative majority on the Supreme Court that created lovely things like Citizens United. But uh, Scalia and uh, what's that other asshole? Uh, uh, Clementine? Clarence Thomas. Those two always, always take the most conservative point of view. Now, with somebody like Romney, a Republican, in the office, he is much more likely to recruit more assholes like that to the Supreme Court. That is very, very dangerous, and it's going to mean years and years and years of decisions that favor the conservative side of things, big business, and do not favor the normal, everyday person, which is you. Sorry, that was my page thing, I'm a jerk. So it will not favor you. It will favor big business and religion, which we do not want for many, many, many years. The Supreme Court terms are for life. So it is a much bigger issue than anybody has talked about. The other issue is Obamacare. Many people will say, as I said um, um, when the issue was originally debated, that this wasn't good enough, that it should be a single-payer system. But I just want to point out to you something. People, including myself, who have pre-existing conditions are not able to get insurance on their own. Why is everybody texting me when I'm trying to do some goddamn shit? Let me turn it. Well, no, I like that it says high cholesterol, so I'll leave it. Will you stop walking around making noise? The thing is, people like me with pre-existing conditions, currently, we can't get insurance unless we are enslaved with some large corporation who is willing enough to take us. Now, there are many people who cannot work for large corporations because of maybe past records, maybe they don't want to, maybe they're artists, all kinds of reasons. Or you can go on Medicaid, which means you also have to be completely broke. Remove all assets, all savings in order to get health care. That's ridiculous. But with Obamacare, it removes the exclusion of pre-existing conditions. In, Insurance companies are no longer allowed to deny coverage due to pre-existing conditions. And this is huge. Huge. This will save hundreds of thousands of lives. And for the people who say, well, it's not fair, I shouldn't have to purchase insurance because I'm healthy. Well, I'm sorry, but that's just idiotic because you're taking a risk. And when you're taking a risk by not having insurance, we're all paying for your risk anyway. It's just that you're not paying for your risk. Because when you get sick and go to the, and go to the emergency room, guess who pays for that? We do, the people with insurance, the, because the hospitals pay for it. But you don't. You get it for free, you moron. So anyway, all Obamacare does is it increases the risk pool so that everybody who's healthy and not healthy has insurance. And therefore... Everybody can get insurance, and everybody has the ability to stay healthy. It is good for everyone. So that's really it. Now, I've been upset about a lot of things that Obama did. I'm not happy with the drone strikes. I agree with um, Max Kaiser, who I used to work for in Paris recently, and he uh, often talks about how there's not much difference in in terms of 
financial regulation with a, with a, the left and the right, which I mostly agree with. You know, they've basically let Wall Street do whatever the fuck they want, and I don't agree with that. I don't agree with a lot of it. But the thing is, with healthcare, there's a huge, huge difference. With the Supreme Court, there's a huge, huge difference. It's the difference between me, Madge Weinstein, getting healthcare and not. It's the difference between children getting healthcare and not. It's the difference between your mother getting care for cancer and not. And it's the difference between you calling the emergency or the 911 and not because you don't want to pay the bill. This is how it works in America. You know this. When you don't have Obamacare, it means we pay for your stuff anyway. And if you're so cold against it, it's just what normal countries do. It's what every, every Western civilized country does. Everybody does it. Everybody has health care except for the United States. As far as the Supreme Court goes, well, a friend of mine said it best when I said, you know, French friend, why is it that in America we discuss abortion? And I've never heard it discussed in Europe at all, in all these different countries with all these different Catholics and uh, these weird religions and all this shit all together. How I said, why don't you ever discuss, you know, abortion? It's not even an issue here. And you have gay rights, gay marriage in Portugal. What the, what the fuck? He said, Madge, the problem is you Americans have never been enlightened. We have an enlightenment. High cholesterol. Goodbye.